Hey there, everybody. Merry Christmas. So glad we are together right here today. Head of Discovery Online on this Christmas Eve. Grateful that you are here, especially all of you that might be joining us for the very first time. Welcome. If we have not met before, my name is Johnny, and I serve as one of the pastors here at Huddo Discovery United Methodist Church. Let us not delay. Let's jump right in. Let us give attention to the reading of God's Word as we hear again the story of the birth of Jesus. From Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in their fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. It is a day of magic and miraculous beauty, a day of anticipation and excitement, a day of worship and wonder. We call this time of year the most wonderful time of year because we truly believe that this season is exactly that. The lights. I love driving up and down streets and seeing Christmas lights. I love them in our churches, inside our homes. I love the lights. I love the songs, except for that dang Paul McCartney song. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time, you know the one. It sounds like he just gave up and wrote the simplest thing he could. I don't know. Donny Hathaway's This Christmas, on the other hand, every time gets me in the mood for dancing and singing and Christmas. I love it. The movies, uh, maybe Fires in the Fireplace, although for us, we're still cranking the AC, so I don't know about that. All the traditions that come along with it, this truly is the most wonderful time of year. Maybe you have some traditions of your own. Maybe this is one of them, Uh, making sure that you are engaging with your church family or a church family on Christmas Eve. Uh, If it is, if this is one of your traditions, I'm honored that we get to spend it together. It was definitely one of mine growing up. Uh, We always traveled for Christmas Uh, to go see family out of state and gathered with lots of family in a home. Everybody cramped into different spaces, air mattresses and cots all over the place. It was cramped, but it was fun. But it was one of our traditions as well. No matter where we were, no matter where we were staying, we always tried to find a local United Methodist Church that was having Christmas Eve services to be sure that we were in one of those pews worshiping on Christmas Eve. But we know that Christmas and all of its glory and all of its beauty and merriment isn't simply about what is happening around us right now. It is about what has happened for us. 
It is the most wonderful time of the year because 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born. Emmanuel, some called him. God with us. And because of that, we have hope. Not a chance, not a gamble, but real hope. A firm trust in the promises and the purpose of God. Because God is with us. We are not alone. We are not forgotten. And this is the fuel of our faith. In some ways, the anchor of our souls. The foundation of our faith. We are reminded of that at Christmas time. Because sometimes we forget. We forget that God is with us. We forget that God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. And when we forget, we fret, we fear, we despair, we turn to smaller saviors and weaker gods. But at Christmas time, we remember our God, the mighty God, the creator of the universe is with us. And because God is with us, we can have hope. And because of that hope, we can also live in peace. You can see how one begets the other. We can have peace in our hearts and our souls because we have hope because God is with us. And when we say peace, I don't simply mean the absence of conflict or tension, but a peace that comes from the assurance of God's presence with us. We can live at peace with one another, but we can also live in peace in our soul. The comforting presence of one that is strong and mighty that is with us always. The unsettled soul can find an anchor in the hope of God in Christ Jesus. And that stills us and settles us and gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding that will guard our hearts and minds, as Paul says. As we talked about in our longest night service, that Christ has come and said, Come unto me, all you are weary and heavy laden. If you have huge, heavy burdens in your life, come to me. And I will give you rest. I am gentle and I am humble. You can find rest in me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because of the hope we have that God is with us, we can also find peace for our souls. All the responsibilities that weigh heavy on you, all the quiet disappointments that gnaw at you from the inside, all the concerns that might keep you awake at night or the guilt or the shame that you might carry, God knows about them. He cares about them because God is near to us. We do not have to let those things defeat us or define us. We can have peace. And thanks to that peace that comes from our hope that we have in God and Christ Jesus, because of that peace, we can have joy. Not simply happiness, but true joy. Even in seasons of hurt and pain, we can have a deep and abiding joy because of the hope that we find in Jesus. This joy doesn't gloss over or ignore problems or suffering or hurt. Rather, it sharpens our vision so that we might see God still at work in the world. And that fosters, that continues to work and nurture that hope that we already have. You can see how all these things help one another. It fosters that hope in our lives. It cultivates the ground of our soul so that joy may grow even in the face of all that might try to steal our joy. It's defiant and persistent and life-giving. I've heard it put this way, happiness, in contrast to joy, flows from the outside in, but joy flows from the inside out. And all of this, hope, peace, and joy, all of this is possible because of the great, surprising, and surpassing love of God. A love that originates in God and is made known in Jesus and continues to work in us and through us by the power of the Holy Spirit. A gift that we call grace made available to all that flows not from taking but from giving. That's how God's power works. Not from fear but from faith. 
not from conflict, but from reconciliation, not from domination, but from devotion, not from selfishness, but from service. God's love is God's power. And on Christmas Eve, every year, we remember a silent and holy night long ago when the Gospel writer Luke tells us of a very young and very pregnant Mary and a weary Joseph walking beside her. They had traveled over 80 miles, a journey of several days for them from Nazareth in the province of Galilee to Bethlehem in the province of Judea. Mary went into labor, and because no one could provide them with a normal bed and a normal house, she had to give birth in a stable. And we can imagine oxen or donkeys or some sort of cattle filling the air with their sounds and scents <laughs> as Mary wrapped this newborn baby in rags and laid him, laid him down in a manger, which was, if you don't know, a food trough for farm animals. On that dark night, in such a humble place, enfleshed in a tiny, vulnerable, homeless, helpless baby, God's light began to glow. And that baby, on that night, that silent and holy night, lying in that humble manger, there pulses more power, potential, wisdom, grace, and aliveness than all the rest of us could ever imagine, and radiant with so much promise for our world then and today. What else could be said? This is the good news and the foundation of our faith. God has come near to us. It's the reason for the season, as we say, and for our gathering here online and our celebrations today. We have gathered today right here hoping to hear again that familiar story and to feel good and comforted and maybe even just check another box on our Christmas tradition list. And what a wonderful thing that is. What better tradition could you have than that? And if that's all your spirit needs today, if that's the reason you showed up, you wanted to hear the Christmas story and you wanted to hear words of faith and promise again, then I'm grateful for you to receive the comfort of a familiar space, a familiar story, and a familiar feeling. God bless that. But if you've shown up today wanting that, but also a little bit more, here you go. The real potency of Christmas is not in our ability to hear the good news, but in our ability to receive it. Just like any good gift, right? The power and the potential and the potency of a good gift is not simply that it exists there under the tree. The best part about it is when we receive it and we open it and we use it. I like to quote every Easter and every Christmas Eve from one of my very favorite theologians, pastors, authors, the late Frederick Buechner. And he says, what keeps the wild hope of Christmas alive year after year in a world that is notorious for dashing all hopes is this haunting dream that the child born that day may yet be born in us today. So today, we are all innkeepers deciding if there is room for Jesus in our hearts. Is there room for Jesus there? in our hearts, in our lives? Will we invite Christ in? Will we invite that holy family in so that Christ might be born in us again? Will we make room for Jesus there? Even if we consider our hearts to be the humblest of abodes for Christ, will we make room for him? If we will, then our hearts will not only be warmed by the good news, but they will glow with the very light and love of God that was in Jesus. We become like candles burning in the darkness through which light can shine into the night. And even the smallest of flame can illuminate an entire room. You see, 
Christmas is as much a process as it is an event. It is born in us anew each year so that your heart and mine can be Christ's home. A new day, a new creation, a new you, and a new me can begin tonight. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, on this holiest of days, we come to kneel again at the manger, bringing all that we have, though it may seem little to offer the King of all creation. We come bringing what we have so that we might be near to you as you have drawn near to us. Be born in us again this day and every day as we reflect on the year that has gone by and look forward to the days, weeks, and months ahead of us and all the ways in which your Holy Spirit is going to work in our lives to shine light in the darkest corners of our hearts and in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Remember, as Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So now go to bring light into the darkness. Joy to those who can find no joy. Wonder to a world that is steeped in doubt. Go with the songs of angels in your ears and the love of God in your hearts to spread the good news. The babe of Bethlehem has been born for all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas. Hey y'all, it's Pastor Johnny. Thanks for joining us today at Huddle Discovery Online. Be sure to drop a comment down below. Let us know you're here. And if you're so inclined, share this video. We love it when you share your church with your friends. And be sure that you're subscribed to this channel so that you stay notified when new content drops. If you're just checking us out today, we'd love to invite you to worship with us in person on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. here at Huddle Discovery United Methodist Church. Also, be sure that you're signed up for our email newsletter so that you can stay up to date with all that's going on in the life of the church and find out how you can get involved. If there's any way myself or Pastor Kyron can connect with you this week, click the connection link in the description of this video. Whether you have questions about the church, membership, baptism, small groups, youth, or children, if you have a prayer request or you'd like to find out uh, how to serve or whatever it is, let us know. We'd love to connect with you. And finally, if you have an offering that you'd like to give to the church today, visit our website at huddodiscovery.org slash give. There you can give digitally, a one-time gift, or set up a reoccurring and automated offering. You'll also find their information to mail in your offering if you prefer that. Grace and peace, y'all. See you again soon.